Zobi was sleeping, so I didn't want to bother him. Uh, 40 seconds left in the act. Um, okay, so we have you up. I don't know how this is going to look like on the website. I might want to fix this. So if I do something like one, two, three, four, five, let's make it like five each. Two, three, four, five. Okay, and then we have Ubuntu, so that's the repository. We have our latest tag, image ID, created. Size, okay. Um, that might be too close. There, that's a little bit better. All right, list docker images. When we ran the docker run command, docker automatically pulled down the docker image, Ubuntu latest, for us. We can view the images that are on our system with the docker, with the command docker images. So then we do docker image, oh, uh, objectives. Okay, so we have our images, um, and we just did this one, but now it's going to be not three weeks ago anymore on the video. Uh, oh, maybe, oh, yeah, I guess it depends upon when it was created. Let's go through the table that Docker displays for us. Repository. Um, I wonder if I do want this to be content. Like, I go back and forth on that. Repository. Docker stores its images in repositories similar to how GitHub stores code projects in repositories. Each image gets its own repo, which makes it easy to know which image we're creating a container from. When we ran the command docker run dash it Ubuntu, the Ubuntu was the name of the repository. Something to note, single name repositories like Ubuntu are official repositories. So... Um, I want you to describe, uh, um, to determine if a, um, Docker repo is official or not. Something to note, single name repositories like Ubuntu are official repositories, as in they are created by Docker or an official organization. For example, the Ubuntu repo is managed by Docker, so you can be assured that it is what they claim it to be. If the repo had a namespace like brookzerker slash Ubuntu, then you would know that this wasn't the official Docker version of Ubuntu, but rather one created by the user brookzerker, which, you know, happens to be me. Tag. The Ubuntu image, oh, and these should be one level more. The 
the Ubuntu image has a tag latest, which denotes that it's the latest version of the Docker image available to us. Note that the tags can and often do correlate to the version of the software that they are wrapping, but they can be independent as well. If we wanted to install an older version of Ubuntu, we, we could have specified the tag when running the container with the command docker run it ubuntu 20.04, which would download and run Ubuntu version 20.04, 20 um, 20 instead of the latest version available. This can be very useful because we often want to develop on the same systems that we are deploying on, and the tags let us control this. Image ID. Uh, so then something about the tags. So um, choose which version uh, to download with a tag. Image ID. Every image gets a hash as the ID, and we can use that instead of the name when running Docker commands. For now, we only need to be aware that the ID exists and where to find it. Created. This column shows how long ago the specific image plus tag was created. This can be helpful in debugging our code in case it stops working with newer versions. Size. Docker is a great tool since it allows us to run entire operating systems and other tools locally without installing them on our host systems. But the cost is how much space they can take up on our system. This specific image is taking up 69.3 megabytes of space, which doesn't seem like a lot, but some systems can take up more than one gigabyte. If we run into space issues in our systems, um, I'm using that a lot. How about computers? Take a look at the images. Um, take a look at the images can clean. Uh, take a look. At which at. Um, may, OK, at the images. Uh, we have installed. And see if we can clean them up to free some space. I like that more. All right. So with that being saved, uh, can move you off to the side. This is, oh, I forgot to update you. All right, list Docker images. All right, next up, listing Docker images. Um, and this, oh, we're starting, well, whatever. I'll do it near the end for each one. That'll be fine. There we go. Now the mouse is gone. All right, now that we have uh, run our first Docker container, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the image that we used. We can do this with the command uh, docker images. Now we did this initially when we first installed Docker and we had no images whatsoever to look at. But now we have, we have one image. Uh, it's this Ubuntu image. And we can see we have some information here. Now, before we had these titles, but with no images to look at, but now we have some context for it. So we can dive a little bit deeper in and see what we have. Now, first off, repository. Well, this is sort of like the GitHub repository that I mentioned um, before, which is the Ubuntu repository. 
And now that just happens to correspond with the project Ubuntu, the Linux operating system, and you've, you are gonna see this a lot. This is a very big pattern within the Docker ecosystem that you name the repository after the technology that you're getting in the Docker container. Um, tag. Now, right now we have this tag latest. And you notice we didn't do anything to cause the tag latest to show up. It just is there. And that is to let us know that by default, we get the latest tag. However, it is possible for us to set the tag specifically. Now, we could do that if I want to use our run command again. We can do docker uh, run it uh, Ubuntu and then colon to give it what the tag is going to be. And that we want, uh, let's say we want 20.04, um, which is going to be a very specific version of Ubuntu. Please note that the tags are set independently of what the actual content is. Now, hopefully, whoever's running this repository is going to set the tag 20.04 to correspond with the version 2004 Ubuntu. That kind of just makes sense to us. And for the most part, especially with the official repositories like Ubuntu here, um, and I'll get into that in a second, uh, that's exactly what we're going to run into. But with other, you know, repo repos, it might it might be a good idea to look into it and we'll we'll show how to find more information about these repositories in future videos. Uh, for right now, this is how we can set the tag. Uh, and so if I run this, it'll tell us that we don't actually have this tag and it's going to pull it down. And there we go. We're now dropped into another version of Ubuntu. I'm just going to go ahead and straight up exit. Uh, and let's uh, do our Docker images command again. And okay, so we have um, next up, image ID. So the image ID is the hash of the image itself that we want to use. We can actually use this ID in lieu of any other command. So if you know what the ID is, you can then do docker run with that command as opposed to using the, uh, uh, the nice name here. Um, created at. So the created here is interesting because this is not when we downloaded and got the image onto our system. This created is telling us when the image was created and uploaded to Docker itself. And so it's telling us, okay, so the latest version was 12 days ago. Okay, that's a little bit under a week, but the 20.04 tag, that was two weeks ago. Now, because the tags are not, it's, it's, they can be updated and they can be changed and the contents of, of them can be changed. It is possible for something like 20.04, which is, you know, that should be set, right? There shouldn't be that big of updates happening to it, but it's possible for somebody to upload uh, a new version with the tag 20.04, that exact same tag name combination. And if that happens and it breaks whatever code that you have that's running inside this container, it can be helpful to know, oh, they updated the image. That's why it's breaking now. Just something to be aware of that it can happen. And then when weird stuff, if weird stuff happens, then you know that that's something to be aware of. And then finally, we have size. So um, our Ubuntu latest is taking 69.2 megabytes up, and the 20.04 is taking 65.7 megabytes up. These are then two different things that are each taking up over 60 megabytes of space in our system. Now, this doesn't seem too much right now, and it's it's not, uh, but I have seen Docker container or well, Docker images take up of excess of one gigabyte in the past. So if we are running out of disk space on our, on our computers, then it might be a good idea to just run a Docker images command and just see if we're, uh, see if we're using anything up. In a future lesson, we'll go over how to delete images, which uh, is one of the ways of, well, it is the way of cleaning up a lot of uh, disk space uh, really quickly. 
And that's it. This is how we can list all of our Docker images that we have on our system and are available and ready for us to use. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. All right, and then... What is this? This is zero, one, one, eight. Okay, three down. What was that? I got a... Oh, there was the tweet from the Rust Foundation about uh, the marketing specialist role, which um, it'd be interesting to work for the Rust Foundation, but I'm not that interested in it. I would, I would feel that there's probably too much politics in there. All right. Find and pull Docker images. All right, so everything looks good there. Let's go ahead and uh, jump in here. So far, we've run the official Ubuntu Docker image directly with the docker run command. But this command will not only pull the image, but also run it. In some cases, we just want to pull an image and make it available on our system without running it at the same time. We can do this with the docker pull command. I guess like a download a... Docker image without running it. To find an image to pull, we're going to visit Docker Hub, which is the repo that Docker maintains public Docker images. To use the repo, we can, um, uh, yeah, okay, so to use, let's just say like Docker Hub. To use Docker Hub, we can search for any operating system or software, and if there is an image for it, we can pull it. For example, uh, I think this doesn't need to be a personal. We'll search for Postgres and find that there is an official image for the Postgres database. So also, let's see, find, um, Docker images on Docker Hub. Uh, let's see. Now, I this probably works here. You would call Docker Hub a registry rather than a repo. Oh yeah, that's probably a good point. That is that is right. It is a registry, just like GitHub is the registry, as opposed to an individual repository. Yeah. I like that. Um, let's see. Which is a... Which is the registry that Docker maintains public Docker images. To use Docker... Uh, to, okay, so that's good. I do a lot of deployments to AWS and use their managed databases. As of the writing of this article, um, AWS supports 
Postgres 16.1, which happens to be the latest version of Postgres. However, I want to make sure that I'll be using this specific version in the case that Postgres updates, but AWS lags behind. So I'll switch to the Tags tab in Docker Hub. Also, Skimmus, hello, how are you doing today? And find the tag representing uh, this specific version. In this case, it's 16.1, which, you know, kind of makes sense. To pull this specific, okay, so um, find Docker images um, on Docker Hub, and then also find a specific tag um, for an image. on Docker Hub. To pull this specific image down, we'll use the docker pull command, docker pull postgres 16.1. And then we have our output, and that's it. We now have an image for postgres version 16.1 available on our computer, ready for when we need to use it. We can view it with the docker images command. Okay. I. I am really curious about how this is going to look in the um, in in the the website web page. It's today a recording session. It is. It's a verification, so like second pass through each article, and recording it down. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we have that. Um, these are our objectives. We've got you. Um, we have no other things. Okay, so I think we're good to go. You over there. We want you. Um, we also want you. Let's close you. Go to hub.docker. This will be good. Oh, that one, that size, this size should be good. Um, this drops me straight into, oh, my homepage. Um, that's not great. Let's go ahead and log me out. That's what I wanted to see. All right. So with that being said, uh, oh, right, next up, we update you. This is find and pull Docker images. And I think we're ready to go. So I'll go ahead and... Um... Oh, you know what? I've been having my my thing on here where I just sort of stare blankly at the screen. But that's, that's not really all that helpful. But I think I'm going to be cutting this out anyway. So I'm just using this as a... Um as a as a, a thing to see in the video editor. So I'm going to have to do that because I have me in here. That's so that's so fun. All right. Well, whatever. Now I don't have to be silent in it now that I know that that's what's happening. Um, OK, so let's. Um, we're going to find find Docker images in Docker Hub, find a specific tag for an image on Docker Hub and download a Docker image without running it. Got it. All right. Let's uh, let's do this. In this lesson, we're going to go on to Docker's registry for Docker images and search for a very a specific Docker image. Um, now, in this case, we're probably we're going to search for Postgres, but this can you can use this method to find any technology as long as somebody has created a Docker image for it uh, to use. 
So with that being said, let's jump into it. Here we are at Docker Hub. Now Docker Hub is the registry for Docker images, or at least it's the one that is used by default by Docker. And it's also the one that most people mean when they say, you know, Docker registry. It's, it's the default one. And, and because it's run by Docker, we can generally trust it too. Uh, it's sort of like when somebody says, oh, are you going to throw that up on online? And they're talking about GitHub. They're, you know, the, that's generally, that currently it's the, the default, as of at least this recording. Now, I want to find a different image to show off using our Docker pull command so we can pull images down without running them at the same time. And the first thing that I can think of is a database because databases are incredibly useful to have and it's a pain to install them and set up on their own on our computers, but they're really easy to when we're doing them inside of Docker. Now, my current favorite database right now is Postgres. So let's go ahead and find that. So I'm just gonna type in Postgres here. And uh, there are 10,000 results for Postgres that were found, but the very first one here is the one that we're gonna want. Now, how do I know this? Well, previously we mentioned that if it's just a single name, um, then it's gonna be, uh, that, that's gonna be the official one, right? And that, that's exactly what this is. Um, it's a single name, so we know that this is an official image. And we even have this little tag here, Docker official image. Now down here, Bitnami Postgres has a different icon on it. It's a verified publisher. So there's a subtle difference here, which is Bitnami is not associated with Docker, the organization at all, um, but they're verified. So this is sort of like that, that check mark next to the name to say, okay, well, Docker is verified that this is from Bitnami. Like we, we can trust that this is from Bitnami and if you need something from the company Bitnami, this is the one to go from. But if you want just Postgres, this is the one we wanna go with. And I really like the Docker official images because uh, I am at least as, I am as confident as you could can be with a third party anything you know to download and run on your system now if we were to go far enough in uh we'll stop we'll stop seeing these um blue check marks let me go down to the bottom here um here sponsored um open source uh let's go like 10 pages deep and at this point in time we now have just anybody uploading them so for example, cycloid Postgres dump um, has created this image for uh, image to be used and they don't have any kind of icon next to them. And so we know that this is not from Docker. We know it's not from Postgres or any other like known uh, individual or organization because it is a username slash uh, then name of the image. And this is a very common pattern that you'll see in Docker, which is everything is namespaced. Only official Docker images are allowed to have single word names. So let's go back to our uh, first page here. In fact, I'm just gonna say, I want official Docker images only. There's only one for Postgres. So we're just gonna click into here and we have our page where we can now see how we can get and run Postgres. And there's a lot of good information on here. Now, I do, I, I do use Postgres a lot. And one of the places that I run it is in production. And I do like to run it on Amazon. I have a managed database in Amazon that's a Postgres database. And uh, as of right now, I believe that uh, 16.1, I think, uh, is the most recent um, uh, version of Postgres on AWS. And I wanna make sure to lock it to that version here under for development that I have on my system. So that way I can be confident that whatever features I'm using in Postgres for development is gonna be the same, they're gonna be supported on AWS where I'm well, in production. So we're gonna go to tags here and see our list of tags. And there's a lot of them. If I were to just attempt to scroll through these, it would be really, really painful. And we can even see it starts up here with 12, which is 
pretty old. I'm not really fully sure the ordering of these, uh, how Docker decides to order them. It um, it gen generally takes, um, doesn't make too much sense to me. Uh, so if we scroll all the way to the bottom of this page, we can see there's over 10 pages of this. So that's not really, really helpful. I'm gonna go back up to the top. Let's scroll all the way up, and I'm gonna search for uh, 16.1. And we have a couple we have a couple choices here. So we have like 16.1 bullseye. Um, I don't necessarily know what bullseye means, so I'm gonna avoid it right now. Uh, bookworm. Um, okay, here it is. Tags 16.1. This is what I want. Um, and then if I click on you. It will then show us, okay, so uh, what architectures it's available for, what like what it's all built on. All, none of this really matters that much. Um, what's really important for us is to see that this is, you know, this is still part of that Docker official image, but it's hopefully locked to Postgres 16.1. Now it's good to point out that anybody on the Docker team can upload with any tag and just continuously overwrite it. So it's important to, um, to remember that the 16.1, it should correspond with 16.1 Postgres, but it's possible that it doesn't. Now with the official, repos the official repositories like Postgres, you're not gonna run into that problem. It's going to be a one-to-one -one, um, Connection, a one-to-one -one something. Um, it's gonna be one-to-one -one of like the version of Postgres to the version of, well, Postgres inside the Docker image. If you're running off of a non-official image, one of those that just is username slash Postgres, let's say, they could say that is like latest, but it's Postgres version eight, for example. So something to be aware of. Um, even though, I mean, it's not really a problem. It's just, please be aware of that. All right. So now we have our name, our repo name, and we have the tag combination that we want. Let's go ahead and download this into our system without running it at the same time. So Postgres 16.1. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. We're going to switch back to our terminal and we're going to run a uh, Docker pull. So pull is going to pull down the image. This is sort of like uh, git clone. And Postgres 16.1. And that's that. I don't need anything else. We hit return. It's going to say that it doesn't have this locally. And it's going to go ahead and pull from Docker Hub. And now that it's here, we can now see Docker, well, we can see the Postgres image that we just pulled uh, with Docker images. And here it is. We have Postgres 16.1. It was uh, created four weeks ago and it is 448 megabytes. And that's it. We now have a Postgres image waiting for us to create a container from it on our system. Uh, which is pretty exciting. Anyways, that's it for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching and uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye. All right. To do, oh, uh, I keep on forgetting. I wanna record the timestamps that I'm doing these on. So do that. This is zero one thirty nine like 59. All right, good to go. Google, what does bullseye mean in Docker tag? Images tagged with bullseye, bookworm, stretch, buster, or Jesse are code names for different Debian releases. At the time of this writing, the stable Debian release is 12 and its code name is bookworm. Bullseye is Debian 11, buster is 
10. Okay. I for some reason my my brain was going into like 10. Dot June 20th. What? Okay, and then June 20th, 2023. Okay. Um well Alpine goes to Alpine is then Alpine, right? All right. Cool. That's that's good to know. We learn something new every day, which is awesome. Thank you for that, Hugh. Alpine is a really small image. Pluses and minuses there. Yes, absolutely true. Uh, by the end of at the end of the course, we do uh, use. Let's see, where is it? After the deving with Docker section, we down here in miscellaneous, we have using Alpine to reduce Docker sizes. So we, we do go over using Alpine. Um, let's see. Include Dior. Hello. How are you doing today? Is there a networking section yet? So yeah, I have network. Where do I put networking? Um, I, I do... Connect two containers with a network here. So I do have them... Uh, in the Devin with Docker section. Um, then real Enrico, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, where's your previous courses? Did you finish the new? Oh, so I, I can't, I canceled the Axum course because it was updating too much. So be, because hyper updated to 1.0, and in the course of hyper updating to 1.0, they took out a lot of stuff that Axum was relying on. Everything changed. And like uh, Tokyo, I'm oh, no, sorry, Axum has now done two breaking change updates since then. And they're not at 1.0 yet. So I'm kind of waiting until they get to 1.0, at which point then we're going to create a course for it. But I want them to settle down a little bit more. Because I, I was getting like... I was like, oh, I didn't want, I did not look forward to like, okay, let me write, oh, I have to rewrite this, I have to redo this, I have to redo this. Yeah, that was gonna be, that was gonna suck. I, I honestly don't know. Like, I, I, I think it could literally be any day that Axum 1.0 ships. I, I want, I believe that the only reason it hasn't is because there's other, libraries that they're relying on that need to update to the latest version of hyper and then and then every or support whatever that latest version of hyper is and then they can go so i i think that axum is like kind of ready but some of their dependencies are not and those are not controlled by the tokyo environment because otherwise i think there was i think all the tokyo stuff they're, they're just sort of like waiting now Uh, have you read any of the tech stuff on Docker that is written up at pythonspeed.com? Might be useful pointers if you want to incorporate. I have not. Um, so yeah, that might uh, that would be something interesting. Let me add that to my list to take a look at. I do sometimes try not to like read other people's courses too much because I I don't want to like accidentally steal. What they're doing like if i'm going to recreate what they do i want it to be like just from my own brain as opposed to like oh i was influenced by them subconsciously and now i just recreated everything they have and think that it's me that would that would suck so let me check out um that being said like i i'd be happy to like sort of check out what they are and after i create the course i i usually read up on some of these things um so what is this pythonspeed.com on speed.com um two, okay and that's it that's all that stuff let's uh let's continue on oh delete the docker image which one are we deleting oh i think we delete the ubuntu one
Oh, it's like all of the all of the shasums. Oh, that's fun. It's like this is all misspelled. How could you possibly live with this? Okay, there we go. All right, delete a Docker image. Um, obviously, delete a Docker image. So delete a Docker image. Docker images can take up a lot of space, and sometimes we need to clean them up. Docker gives us an easy way to remove images from our system. We recently installed the Postgres image, which we can see is taking up 447 megabytes of space. All right, so that's the one we're doing. We can remove this image and free up that space with the docker rmi command. It turns out that Postgres had a lot of layers, that is, small images that built upon the base image, in this case, the Ubuntu image. When we deleted the image, all of the unused images also got deleted for us. All of the unused image... layers also got deleted for us okay so just a really simple one and just using docker rmi rmi so all right good good to know so let's Um, you haven't heard the whole Docker course to explain layers somewhere. I don't remember. I don't think I really officially go through layers. I was thinking this is sort of like an introduction type thing. Um, do you think that it's act like essential to go into like what a what a layer is and how that works, like how how the actual Docker images work? Like I've never run into an issue where like needing to know the layer system stop me from like using Docker. It's a bit unclear who you're pitching this to. Okay, yeah. So this is an introduction. So yeah, as here, I want to do this as an introduction to Docker. Um uh so like your your getting going with docker like at one point you were saying what ubuntu is yeah i have noticed that like a lot of i i guess this is like my teaching background coming in i've taught a lot of people they're like oh yeah they know this type of development type stuff and you're like wait well, what's what's linux um it's like wait you don't know okay fine uh so i i tend to not assume those things because it's um it's kind of funny how that how like that works sometimes like, if you go through all of your school and you're only in windows systems like you could be aware of linux and like know that that exists but not know like specifically like ubuntu or maybe you've heard of it but you don't really know what it is Th things like that can happen quite often so that's usually why i go through that kind of stuff and i try not to take too much time with it so I don't piss off everybody else who does know what it is. Um, okay, so to the Docker image, we have nothing here. That's fine. All right. Okay, so let's uh, let's go over this. Deleting a Docker image. Let's uh, let's take a look at the images that we have here. So we have Docker images. And uh, let's go over how to delete a Docker image. 
Now we rec we just in the last uh, the last lesson we installed the Postgres 16.1, but we have no use for that right now. Um, and then also we have this Ubuntu 20.04 that we had, you know, that we downloaded as part of the the tag example. Let's go ahead and delete both of those images uh, from our system because they're taking up 448 megabytes and 65.7 megabytes respectively. And we can do that with the docker rmi command. So if we do docker rmi uh, postgres. Now, if I try this, um, it should, yeah, it, it doesn't know what this is because it assumes that if I don't put a tag on it, then I'm going for latest and it can't find that. So I have to put on the tag. So in this case, it's 16.1. And we can see that it deletes both this, uh, both the image, so it untags it. So that means that this image is still in our system, but then it also immediately deletes, um, uh, deletes the image. But there's a whole bunch of these things here. Well, it turns out that Docker images are actually just a bunch of other images layered on top of each other, which makes it easy to build new ones, but this is also one of the reasons why it takes up so much space. It's also why it's so fast to get up and running. Uh, we don't need to know too much about how the images work, just to know that uh, that's why we always see so many of these things whenever we do something with an image. Let's go ahead and also uh, remove this Ubuntu 20.04, but this time I'm gonna use the image ID for it, which we mentioned earlier that you can use to uh, to do any of the commands with. I'm just gonna show this off here. So we do docker rmi, give it that image ID and it, oh, um, oh, it's being used. Um, all right. Uh, we'll have to stop that first. So we'll have to do Docker. I actually don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> okay. I'm going to restart the recording. And by restart the recording, I mean, we're just going to do it over again. Let's uh, go ahead and Docker pull again. This is our first take two of the day. We'll just only do this one. All right, so I can start off with that there. And we can take two. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. Let's talk about how to remove a Docker image from our system. Now, we mentioned previously that uh, these Docker images can take up quite a bit of space. For example, the Postgres image that we just downloaded is taking up 448 megabytes of space, which is, um, I mean, it's not a huge amount, but uh, it's not a small amount either. It's almost half a gig. Uh, and we don't need that right away. So let's go ahead and clean it up. Since we don't need it right now, let's just delete it. We can do this with the docker rmi command. Uh, so remove images, that's, that's what it's short for. So we're gonna do docker rmi uh, postgres. And then we have to give it, we have to be very specific about this. I can't just say docker rmi postgres because by default, it's gonna look for the latest tag. And we can see here that we don't have a postgres latest, sort of like we have the Ubuntu latest. We only have postgres tag 16.1. So we're gonna to have to reference that with a colon 16.1. This will now remove the docker, the, the postgres 16.1 image. And there we go. Okay, so it deletes it. It's pretty fast to delete it to, to delete it. And we notice that not only did it delete, you know, the one thing here, it also deleted all these other things here. And it turns out that the way that Docker works and the reason why it's so fast is uh, because Docker images are actually layers of other images. So whatever, whatever these images represent, 
other ones were built on top of it. So we might have something like Ubuntu, and then, you know, they added something to it, they patched it, whatever, and then eventually we installed Postgres on it and, and configured that up up here. Uh, and that's it. So now we have successfully uninstalled and deleted an image from our system, and we freed up almost half a gigabyte of space. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next lesson. Bye. All right, that was better. Update a Docker image. Composition of Docker commands in bash. Docker remove. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. If you want to, like, remove all of the Docker images altogether, you can do that command. Where uh, you can sort of, like, combine them together. And then if you want to... You know, Hugh, if you want to like put them together, you can replace that like second line where you have like the dollar sign for the shell with an and and, and then it will first remove all the containers and then remove all the images all in one go, which is nice for cleaning up a lot of space all at once. All right, ad break, another five minutes. Um, I'll probably continue moving through this because we took a break last time. You can also grep to select particular images or containers. Oh, absolutely, yeah, and you can pass that. Yeah, that's true. Shell scripting is so awesome. I, 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 I think that um, people who know shell scripting and like know the power of it, they, they know. They, they're, they're able to use that. People who never learn those skills, um, oftentimes, I, I've noticed that they oftentimes jump straight into like programming itself and like use the shell only as like a launcher, essentially. Uh, but like you can program in bash, you can program in Z Zish or whatever other of your preferred shell is, and you can do some really cool things with it too. All right. Um, update a Docker image. Why do you not like, is internet supposed to have a capitalization? Is that like, is that a thing? I always thought that internet was just a common word, not like must be capitalized. This reflect okay, so when the internet first came into common use, most publications treated the internet as a capitalized proper noun, but this has become less common. This reflects the tendency in English to capitalize new terms and move them to lowercase as they become familiar. So it's it basically is in 2016, it was 54% of cases being capitalized. Okay, capital internet being preferred in the United States and lowercase internet being preferred in the United Kingdom. That's funny. Oh, and Hugh, I noticed that you, okay, you found the same thing.
The word internet can be both a proper noun and a regular one. So you often find it with both capital I and a lowercase i when referring to the www as a whole, it's a proper name and it should be capitalized when it's used as a regular noun. Okay, so am I using, <laughs> how am I using this? Service without an internet connection. I'm using it as a, am I using it in a proper way? I don't think so. I think this is this is proper to use lowercase here. Right? Or maybe it just shows that I don't know what I don't know how to use proper nouns. Use network. Oh, that's a good idea. I wish I really wish that this had the ability to like change, but I don't, I don't think that I spell has the ability for me to like, just completely replace it with like my own word. That would be really cool, but I don't, ha I don't have that. So I'm going to have, I'll have to remember to go in and find this specific word and then change it. So I'm just gonna say, okay, um, accept you right now. Ooh, that's a that's a good one. Okay, yeah, so oh, no, I wanted to find internet without a network connection. All right. When we pull a Docker image to our system, it is locked to the version that was uploaded to Docker Hub. This is great as it allows us to use these services without a network connection. However, we also miss out on security updates that a specific tag may get. For example, the Ubuntu 20.04 image is tagged to the minor update 20.04. If a patch update for 20.04 is released, bringing the official version of Ubuntu to 20.04.6, then we'll, then we'll be missing out on that update. Um, we can fix this by running the docker pull command again with the same image and tag combination. If there is a new version on Docker Hub, then it will be down, then it will download it and overwrite the version you have, um, we have locally. All right, so this is just um update a docker image since tags don't have to correspond to versions of the software they are representing it is possible for an image to have a breaking change even if the tag is for the same exact version if you ha if you are running Docker in production and it suddenly stops working despite locking the image and tag, this could be the culprit. Run an update locally and see if you can reproduce the problem. This screwed me up so badly on oh, the past. It it really sucked. Oh, there is a shell scrape escape. Oh, that's true. I could do shell escape said internet network. Yeah, I could do that. We can try that next time. There isn't a way to revert back to previous version versions of an image after you update them. They can provide security updates, but can also break your environment. You'll need to determine when the right time to update your images are. 
The general rule of thumb is to keep your local version of images up to date with whatever you have in production. Most cloud-based systems right now auto update and like pull again. And so you'll have to do something to lock that down if you want to, which I mean, there, there's good and it's, there's good and bad things for that. Um, okay, so I think we're good to go.